Okay, so I'm joined here today uh, by Alex Bloomberg, co-founder and CEO of Gimlet Media, and by Matt Lieber, co-founder and president of Gimlet. And I am super excited. I, I hope you've been able to tell all morning. I'm so excited. I can't wait to talk to you yes. because you guys have a really fresh and interesting take on, I think, at least three of the themes that are coming out of the entertainment and media outlook this year. You're rethinking the fan experience in podcasting. You are actually um, developing a Swiss Army knife of new business models that I think are really interesting. And uh, you have, as we've talked about uh, previously as we prepped, you have you're tapping into new hours in a media user's day. And, uh, and that's the way you find growth in a media market that, as we've seen earlier from Stephanie, uh, is increasingly saturating. So I'm so glad you guys are here. We have a lot to talk about. We have 20 minutes. All right. Uh, maybe, Alex, you can start us off. Uh, I think there's probably a lot of Gimlet fans in the audience, but probably also some folks that don't know Gimlet. Yeah. Talk to us about Gimlet a little bit. And as the founder, what, the, what was the opportunity that you saw in uh, podcasting. Sure. So I, I, how many people listen to podcasts here? Like, OK. There so we are, we are, uh, we are um, a, a digital uh, media company focusing on audio, focusing on um, podcasts. Uh, and uh, my co-founder, Matt, and I started the company about three years ago. Um, and uh, we, we came to it from somewhat some different, we started in similar backgrounds and we came to it for, and then sort of took different routes to each other and to the company. Um, I come from a background, uh, this is the first full-time job uh, in the private sector I've had since high school when I was a, when I was a newspaper, uh, when I was a uh, grocery store bagger. Um, for most of my career, I was a nonprofit journalist in public radio. Uh, I worked at This American Life and I worked uh, at NPR um, and it was there and we did we started podcasting sort of early on, and I was able to see the enthusiasm around digital audio and just the growth. And I just saw it from a creator's perspective, like just people would, we would, we would, um, we just saw increasing adoption, increasing excitement. I would go and do, we would do live shows at the show called Planet Money that I started, uh, and people would come up and ask for my autograph. Uh, and in 15 years in, in public radio, nobody had ever asked for my autograph before. Uh, so I thought something was. Uh, something's mm -hmm. happening here. Um, at the same time, um, and, I, and I decided to, there needed to be more. We needed to make more of this kind of programming. Um, and and uh, so I decided I wanted to go out on my own and start a company. At the same time, Matt was sort of having similar real, realizations from a different perch uh, in, uh, in the business world. Do you want me to do you? No, no yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like the, the insight that we were both, Alex was making podcasts, I was listening to a lot of podcasts and realizing that, so if you look at the history of media, every time a new technology comes along that offers a new channel for distribution, a new media company gets built, right? And you can go back to the 1920s when radio was the technology that got adoption, uptake was, was very quick, and that's when CBS got built. Mm -hmm. And in the 1980s, the technology was cable, and that's when CNN got built and MTV got built. And so we were sort of watching this new channel for on-demand digital audio materialize, and I was saying, like, someone's going to build the company that defines the, the age of digital audio, and I want to do that. I told enough people that that someone said, oh, you should meet this other guy. Because that's all I was talking about, thing. too. Yeah. And that was three years ago when we started Gimlet, which is, which is a, a podcast network that focuses on premium, high-quality storytelling podcasts like Startup, um, which was the first show we did, which was really a documentary about what it's really like to start about a company. About you, you guys starting a documentary yeah. about us, a company, yeah. and that was sort of like innovation number one at Gimlet was go to market, have make a documentary about yourself as a go-to-market strategy, mm -hmm. and it worked wonderfully. That was our first show, and it's now still one of our biggest franchises. Super successful. And now we have other shows across Reply All and Technology, Crime Town and True Crime, Homecoming is a scripted series starring. Catherine Keener and Oscar Isaac. And so the idea is, can you tell big, immersive stories in this new medium and build franchises that have real audiences and attract brand advertising? Yeah. So from startup three years ago, fast forward to now, you're a podcasting network now, and as you said, 13 shows. How do you scale innovation from being something very founder-centric and centered on the two of you to something bigger and scalable? Yeah, so if, if you look at the innovations that Gimlet brought, I think one is 
you know, we talked about this earlier, that when a, a new medium comes along, you have to have a new way of telling stories. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a new formats and new ways to, to bring creativity to bear. And so really, you know, Alex can talk about that, but like doing on-demand audio is fundamentally a different medium, a different format than doing linear um, audio, which is what we've lived with for radio for the last hundred years. And so there's a different way of storytelling. I'd say the other thing is we had we created a new ad product. So like another fundamental innovation is we thought we want advertising to be incremental and additive to the experience of listening because it'll be a better experience for yeah. for, for the audience. And so we created a new a new ad product, which was a story driven, produced, host read um, mid roll. And so you know. I think Alex, cre you, you we, create. It was this sort of came out of necessity when we first started the company. We didn't, you know, I had left these big media companies like NPR and, and This American Life that had, you know, multiple millions of, 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 of listeners, and we were out on our own. And I had like four Twitter followers, and so we just needed to do something to generate attention. And so the only thing going on in our lives was that we were starting this company, and it was really scary. Uh, so we documented that, and then as we started documenting it, we realized this is a great story, and nobody ever tells this part of business formation. That's the story of business formation, which is actually a story of late nights and anxiety and qu constant questioning if, if you're crazy or not. And also like having your family constantly question if you're crazy or not. And that, and we incorporated that into the story and it caught and found an audience. In finding, and we thought of it as nothing but a marketing gimmick, but then we realized, wait a minute, this is our first podcast. This is our first product. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Then we thought, okay, how are we gonna, we have to put an ad on this, what does the ad look like? And it became, we wanted the ad to feel consistent, we wanted it to do, to do work for the client, but also not be disruptive. And so that sort of was, and so I did the same thing with the ads that I was doing with the story. We, we, I went to, we found a company, NerdWallet, uh, it was our very first sponsor, um, and uh, we went, I went to their offices and I started talking, I started just documentary interviewing the people who worked at NerdWallet about what it was like to work at NerdWallet and what they did. And we made a, a very sort of um, human ad product for this brand. Um, and, it was, and, it, and that felt like, oh, we're onto something here too. This, is a, this, this can bring the power of audio to the client in that audio is a very intimate experience. You're listening with your he headphones in, you, you hear the people, um, and, it can, and, it can really, and it can do a lot of work humanizing a brand um, and bringing people you know, sort of like in close contact with that brand. And so that became sort of a template of a, of a kind of ad product. And so we've sim bu since built a whole scalable system and a client yeah. services, creative services organization that can deliver that for, so the clients are now, you know, Ford Motor Company yeah. and Apple, Dell, Lenovo, Virgin Air. And you're building um, podcasts for them now, right? Like for Virgin right. So Atlantic. So first we created a new ad product, then sort of second was we decided, we had, um, we had, you know, brands coming to us who wanted to do whole shows. Yeah. So we create whole productions under a, a separate brand, Gimlet Creative. Yeah. So we've done that for eBay with Open for Business, for Virgin, uh, for Tinder. Uh, we have Microsoft coming soon. And we, you know, we've doubled the output on branded podcasts this year over last year. And now, um, you know, and, and we're also thinking about, you know, we're starting to now develop new products for new audio platforms. Because if you're a brand today, Right, like well, when we started the company, the idea is we're seeing a lot more listening, right? We're seeing like, you know, over the last two years, we've seen 40% growth in the num number of you know, monthly active users in podcasts in, in this market. And so if you're a brand, more people are listening to audio and it means you need to think in new ways about how you sound and what story you're telling, not only in podcasts, but also on Spotify and Pandora and Amazon Alexa and Google Home and sort of having an audio strategy is something that becomes a big opportunity and more important for brands. So we're also you know, developing new products across the yeah. cross products. I want to go back to uh, the native advertising, which is your business model. And you talked a little bit about keeping the podcasts, the branded podcasts, separate from your own shows. Mm -hmm. But as you run ads in your shows, how do you, what's the line that you guys tread yeah. between editorial content and editorial control and sponsored content. Well, I mean that, you know, again, coming from coming from the world of journalism as I do and, and, and media in general, we wanted to be very, very careful that what that what we're giving a, a quality experience for the listener and a quality experience for the brand, but also not not confusing anybody about what is editorial content and what is what is brand driven. And so the way we the way we solve that is that and our hosts read the ads. That's what makes them effective. 
Um, but that also sort of ups the ante. You have to be very, very clear when the regular programming stops and when the ad begins. So we do a couple things. We always say an hour word for some sort of signaling language, and then we always put music under the ad so that it's an identifiable sort of ad theme under each under the ad so that people will always know that when they're listening to an ad, when it's somebody else's words and not our own editorial words. Um, but it's like, that's the exciting thing about starting a new, you know, starting a new mm -hmm. company, starting this in this new world, is that there are rules that are there for a very good reason. You need to uphold your editorial integrity, but the rules were established like 50, 100 years ago in this sort of legacy media organization. So we need to come up with like, what are the rules that can be just as ironclad, just as that, that guarantee our integrity, but are, but are sort of more attuned to the new world in which we live. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I think Gimlet is very special is because you've created this pretty unique, unique user experience where, as a listener, I really feel like I have a personal connection to your shows, to your hosts. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you talk a little bit about how you do that? Yeah. I, well, I, I think that's one of the powers of audio. I, I think, you know, I've worked, uh, I've worked in print. I, we did a TV show at This American Life. I was the executive producer. We won two Emmys. It was two seasons. And I've worked in audio my whole life. And, I, and I've come to believe that different, form, different media have different strengths. And audio, I think its, it's core strength is that, um, well, let me just say, like, how many people have heard my voice in this room, if you've, if you've listened to it? OK. Do I look like what you thought I would look like? No, right? You, and that's, that's very powerful, because you heard my words, and then you, in your mind, you created a vision of me that is different than I actually am. But what that means is that you were hearing my actual words, but in that act of creation of me, my words became, in some small way, a part of you. And so you can identify with me better. And, and what that means, I think, about audio is that it is the most empathetic medium. It has the, the superpower of audio is that it can create understanding between people. Um, TV, I worked in TV like, for two years. I've been involved in TV projects. TV is great at conflict, but it is not super great at empathy. Audio is great at empathy. And so, I don't think it's a surprise, and, and we select for that. When, we're, when we are deciding which pieces of an interview to keep, we are going to zero in on the pieces of, that, are, that are emotionally honest, because that is what works. And if you, and if you select a piece that is not emotionally honest, people are bored by it. They want people being honest. And so when you are listening to an audio, when you're listening to something in audio, you are hearing people's most honest feelings, because that's what works in audio. And, um, and that creates a bond between the listener and the, and, the, and, and the host. But I think you're also helping that bond a little bit along because you're allowing your fans and your users to call into or leave voicemails for the podcasts, right? You well, make follow-up episodes sometimes. They feel, like, they feel like they're friends with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think in many ways they are. Like in, in times that I've been on the podcast where I've like, you know, I've shared very, very intimate details. Matt and I, when we first did the first season of Startup, we, we actually recorded our equity negotiation on tape and broadcast it to the world. We, we, we uh, recorded arguments with our, with our spouses on tape and broadcast it to the world. We were, we were revealing very real human moments. And so people feel like they're friends with, friends with us because they are. We have, like, if you listen to Startup, you knew me better than a lot of my longtime friends who didn't listen to Startup because I was revealing very real things. So, and so that bond is very real, and so people want to interact with you, and, and it's a no-brainer that we create areas where people can interact, where we, we have people call into the show. We go and we do live events where people can show up. And um, you know, I talked about the autographs. I think that's a big part of the autographs, right? There's like a feeling of like, you know, that, that, that they know you, that, they, that you're their friend. If you, if, we, if you look at why people listen to podcasts and like what the use cases are, what we see is like the primary use cases is you're listening on your commute, on your way mm -hmm. into work or your way home from work. You're listening during your workout or you're listening, you know, while you're cooking or doing something else. But if you and we design for those use cases, right? So the average length of a commute is 20 to 40 minutes. Average length of a workout, 20 to 40 minutes. But the episodes of our show, 20 to 40 minutes. And if you think about that person, like you know, on their way to work in the morning, the podcast is offering them companionship. It's like having someone. It's like having Alex 
or you know Wendy from Science Versus, or PJ and Alex from Reply All, or Jonathan from Heavyweight. It's like having them in the passenger seat of the car, kind of along the ride with you. And when we're making shows, it's not the only thing. Pod we think podcasts are also great at telling stories, and we think they're great at like helping people understand. And so we, we, we really want you to come away having like learned something. But the companionship thing is something we select for. Like when we're, we're you know. Um, when we're hiring a host or making a new show, it's like, is this someone you'd want to hang out with for an hour on your mm -hmm. commute? If yes, interesting. If no, like, not a game on show. I was actually wondering about how closely the personalities of your hosts resemble the personalities of who you think the fans are. Is there any connection, you think? Uh, or is it more of that everybody interprets into? I think, it's, I think there's a certain... There's, there's a hosty quality. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the microphone loves certain people the same way the camera loves certain people. Uh, and I think what works in, as a host is, 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 an, is relatability, is, is, is emotional honesty. Mm -hmm. And I think that's across anybody who works in talk radio. I think Howard Stern has it. I think Rush Limbaugh has it. I think the, you know, um, Ira Glass my, you know, at, at This American Life has it. And I think our hosts have it too. They, they are, they, you, when they share their feelings with you, it feels authentic. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit, about, Matt, about the use cases when people listen to podcasts. Uh, that was actually going to be one of my questions is where do you get consumer time from? Because obviously, right. um, as a media user, I only have so many hours in my day. I mean, what I watch so much video already. I consume the news. What more time can I give? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that, that, that's one of the sort of themes is we're seeing like a plateau in time spent with mm -hmm. media, right? It's a lot of time. It's like whatever it is, I don't know, four, 12, 13, 14 hours a day. But there's this final frontier, this last part of people's day that is still relatively untouched by screens. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a lot of time. It's two and a half hours a day. And that's the amount of time you're, you know, you're commuting, you're working out, you're cooking, doing chores, you know, you may be mowing the lawn. You're doing an act, another activity. And the audio is the only medium that you can consume while you're doing something else. So that opens up a, a, a big new window of yeah, time. Yeah, you've just created another two and a half hours yeah. in the attention economy. Right, so we're partly, we're partly steering, stealing share from television. Like, you'll be listening to us instead of having passive television on in the background that you're not watching. You'll be listening to us instead of radio. And we also, you know, there's all these new distribution endpoints, right? Like I listen now on these AirPods and I'll have, I'll be able to listen at times when otherwise I wouldn't have. So it fits into new parts of the day, but there's that big chunk too, which is just new time available that yeah. we're, we're going after. That's great. That's a, that's a really great opportunity uh, to go after. Now you pulled out your device and you, we talked a little bit about distribution and having to be on platforms such as Amazon's Alexa. Um, one thing I noticed is that your shows are actually also available on, uh, on, on, on other shows that I would think are a little bit competitive like Radiolab or Planet Money. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what the thinking behind that is? I mean, the thing behind that is that we're early days here. Like, I mean, I, you know, you were showing sort of like the um, the trend lines and sort of like the categories and like in the and I was looking at the audio one and it was like radio and uh, it was music. music. Yeah, and I was like, we're we're gonna I mean, get to that. We talked about this. We're gonna show that slide. We're we're not there. Yeah. Uh, we're um, we're or like, else. <laughs> no, I mean like. It's, <laughs> or else, <it's>, right? <laughs> exactly. Or else for us. Uh, no, but I think so. I think the. Um, uh, it's very clear that that's like a, a growing part. I'm sorry, I forgot your question. Now I got it. The comp you know, oh, the you're on Radio Lab yeah, so and you're on Planet yes. Money. So, so why are you putting your content there? So we are. So we all believe we're at early days here. Like that. This is this is the beginning of essentially the second golden age of audio. Like David was talking about. Like the first golden age came when the radio came along. People didn't know what to do. They, they sort of slowly figured it out and started programming towards it. And then sort of radio calcified as TV came along and that became the thing. We are now, on demand has come to audio, it's come to audio late. And what that creates is all these opportunities to tell different kinds of stories that we were never able to tell before. So we feel like there's just a whole world that's about to explode. We're part of it and, and that, um, and so that means that like we can, all we want to do is help each other grow because we're not stealing market share from anybody. We're growing this pie. The number so one way it. that listeners learn about new podcasts is from other from podcasts. Podcast, so, it, yeah. so we we're happy to be in front of other podcast audience to tell them what, what about what we're doing and bring them into the Gimlet world. Got it. We're at time. Unfortunately, I could keep 
going with this for a while longer. My last question is around your vision for the future. Gimlet, five years out, what are you going to look like? Uh, we're going to look, I mean, I think we're going to be the, the destination for, for premium audio quality. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the industry, I think the industry is going to continue its, its ascent. It's growing, you know, double digits year over year, and it's, it's like already sort of like a, a word that used to be sort of a weird buzzword when we started, and now is more and more into the, into the mainstream. That's just going to continue to happen, and we're going to be um, the premier. You're going to own it. Pre yeah, own we're going to own it. Yeah. Got it. Thank you so much for being for here today. Yeah, that was really you. cool. Yeah. Um, Next up are my colleague, Chris Vollmer. He's going to be talking to Linda Yaccarino and another fascinating conversation coming up. So thank you guys. Thanks so much.